In this video, I will show you how to paint white flowers, how to simplify complex floral forms, and how to use limited palette. We will be painting these white lilies. Looking at this beautiful reference photo that I found online, analyzing it in my mind, I think to paint these lilies, I will only need a few colors. Instead of gray that I see in the shadows and in the background, I will be using Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. It's a very deep, cool purple, kind of a convenience color. It can be mixed from three pigments. I will also need some sap green for the leaves and the stems. Maybe just a tiny bit of permanent orange to paint the stem in. And I might need some cobalt blue for the shadows on the white. And I'm thinking Holbein's Crimson Lake for the bases of the flowers and for the stamen as well. So that's it, only five colors. And in the demonstration, you can count them and let me know in comments if I used some additional ones and didn't notice. I will be painting on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. The brand is Kilimanjaro. It's a block. And I will start as usual by transferring just the general outline of my flowers onto my watercolor paper with a charcoal rub. I already modified the reference photo and composed it in real size in Photoshop. So I want to transfer what I did on the paper to give myself a starting point. Instead of verifying the drawing with a regular pencil and adding the details before I paint, I'm going to use my Prismacolor color pencils. First of all, I don't want regular graphite showing on the white of the paper or under my transparent washes. I think if I use color pencils, they will look better, more part of the painting. And also, I don't want the pencil to get washed away. I think color pencils will stay on paper a lot better under all my watercolor washes. So that's my reasoning behind using this technique. But I will definitely need a good drawing to figure out where everything is because it's a pretty complex composition and we will be simplifying it to some extent while we paint but i will need a good drawing to keep me on track and not get confused with all those petals and leaves and stamen and buds and everything else that i have going on in the reference photo so i picked some green pencils a couple of purples and orange i will probably need some sort of a maroon color as well I don't want to draw an outline around each flower by no means. I am just trying to draw the darkest areas on the flowers and on the leaves just to give myself something for my eye to reference. I already used this set of pencils for painting Rose of Sharon. If you haven't seen this video, I will leave you the link in the description. It worked out pretty well. I don't think it looked like mixed media. The pencils kind of blended with watercolors pretty well. So for this painting, I want to use the same technique in slightly different order. Start with pencils and then apply watercolor. So here is the drawing. This is as much as I'm going to do, keeping things pretty light. And let's start painting. I will start with a wash of clean water all over my paper to paint white. We don't want to go with bright colors right away. And to keep our initial washes, I will be painting the shadows on those flowers to keep those shadows light and transparent. It's much better to start working wet on wet. Not too much water. I am picking up the excess with a paper towel, but the paper is pretty well saturated. All right, and as I planned, cobalt blue is the color I'm going to use for the initial wash on the shadows. Like I said, the form that I see is fairly complex and I was trying to figure out how to simplify it. And then I realized that if it's hard for me to see where one petal ends and another one begins, maybe I shouldn't even worry about it and treat it all as one form. So a good idea to squint when you're looking at your reference photo and if it all looks like a one shadow shape, I am just going to paint that and not worry about separating each petal and trying to figure out where they overlap each other. When we paint white, it's very easy to start overworking things and the flowers don't look white anymore, but just start looking dirty. Okay, 
and I will also work on that mason jar at the same time because I wanted to treat my painting as a whole and not paint a collection of objects. I want it to be unified and I want the color to be unified so I am going to apply colors everywhere. The shadows that are closer to this source of light, uh, the light is coming from the left, upper left corner I should say, those shadows are a little warmer so I think I'm going to drop in some purple in there to make them a little warmer compared to cooler shadows on the right hand side of the composition but still working wet on wet my paper is still wet you can see it's starting to warp very slightly but it's no big deal the block is still holding up and dropping those light transparent washes into the damp surface of the paper and when working with those transparent washes, it's important to prepare them on your palette. If you watch my other videos, you know that I often drop color directly from the wells on paper, but in this case, of course, it's not going to work because it will be way too saturated and everything will become too dark way too soon. To paint the background, I am using a one inch flat brush and I think I will keep those washes still pretty transparent. The shadow will need to be darkened quite a bit, but I don't want to start dark. For this painting, I want to work with transparent glazes. I don't do that very often, so it will be good practice for me to apply transparent layers. It's hard to work with the large flat brush around the flowers. I need to leave white for the portions of the petals that are brightly lit in the reference photo. So I am switching to my pointy tennis brush to create the edges around the flowers. And using this technique reminds me why I don't like transparent glazes because everything looks very pale for quite a while. You don't have any saturation. You don't have any contrast. But hopefully, by the time we get to the end of this painting, it will all look a lot better. cast shadow on the table. Let's paint that as well before we apply local color for the table since we already have moon glow on the brush. All right, I'm more or less distributed all the colors and now we can start darkening certain areas on the flowers with another transparent wash. Again, try not to go overboard. I'm using diluted moon glow. This stage will be a little more involved because I am trying to find all those tiny shadows on the petals and give the petals a little more definition without going too dark. And also trying to find variety in those shadows. Some of them appear a little more green, some are cooler, so a little more cobalt blue. Some of them are a little warmer, so I can use more purple in them. But that initial drawing that I did with watercolor pencils really helps me because first of all, it has colors, so I have, I feel like I already have some progress in my flowers. It's easier for me to understand what's what. And also I can see the drawing, it doesn't get washed away by my watercolor. intensifying the leaves because they're much darker than the flowers and they help me start building that tonal range. When everything is same tone, very pale, very light, it's very hard to build the range. So I decided to work on the leaves and give them at least some tone, some definition. So I will start creating that 
tonal range already, even at this early stage of my painting. And you can see they kind of start looking like flowers instead of just a amorphous blob that I had in the beginning. I know some people find it tricky painting glass and it does seem pretty complicated because we keep thinking about glass that it has no color so how do I paint it? I think it's essential to just look at it as a bunch of shapes and try to copy those shapes. Not think about the overall form of the jar because it's all reflecting back and forth. So I see there is a green shape that's the stem and I see a dark brown shape and I see a lighter brown shape and I see a light gray shape on top and the bottom. So that's what I will try to paint, try to capture. Let's apply the local color on the table. I mixed permanent orange with a little bit of moon glow that gives me nice kind of tan color that I see there. I know that I already used moon glow and I'm going to use permanent orange for the stamen of the flowers. So I really hesitate introducing additional colors. I could have used like ochre or something like that, sienna maybe, but I hesitate introducing too many colors because that can get you into trouble and your painting might start looking disjointed and just too disorganized. So limited palette that we're using for this painting usually works great. Usually it's a good idea to just stick to five, six colors in the painting and not go overboard and using your whole palette. Let's darken the shadow behind the flower, give it another a little more intense wash. You see that when I started I was hesitating to add tone to that shadow because I had nothing to compare it with. Everything was very light. But now that I painted at least some of the leaves and gave them a little more depth, that gives me a good reference point. I can confidently darken that shadow and add more tone to it. Here are those shapes that we see in the glass jars. So there is something brown in the middle portion there. I see a bit of green also. There are slightly darker areas that we can paint with moon glow. And there is a darker shape there next to the, to the stem of the lilies. All right, it actually started looking like a glass jar a little bit. I picked a pretty difficult reference photo because it's white flowers on a white wall. So I made my task that much more difficult. But if we don't challenge ourselves with more complex subjects, how are we going to progress as artists, you know? So it's, it's a good idea to give yourself a challenge from time to time if you feel in the mood, if you feel brave and try to resolve all these issues and see what you can do. You know, it's just a piece of paper. It's not the end of the world if you ruin it, but you will definitely learn from this experience. The shadows on the flowers definitely need to be darker, at least on the right hand side in the center. So let's do that. But I really don't want them all to be the same because that's just not going to look right. So I'm trying to switch between blues, purples and greens and have variety there. Bye. 
washi applied on the wall it looks all patchy i didn't do a very good job there but let's give it another layer it will hopefully all straighten itself out and making the wall darker behind those flowers will help me bring them out i might make it actually a little bit darker than it is in the reference photo strictly speaking but i just want my flowers to stand out so more color on the wall but i do want to keep it light right there behind that right hand flower because that's where the light hits it and if i just cover it all with a dark wash i will lose illusion that the beam of light is coming from the left hand side and it does need to hit the wall on the right hand side for the lighting to look right in the painting and i think it's time to darken that bud that we have here on the upper left and also the base of that one flower so a little bit of crimson lake for those uh, veins that's there carefully those stamens they're orange but they also have maroon shadows on them so I want to paint that as well with my crimson lake and maybe add that same color in the jar there there might be some stamen reflecting in there again very important not to over darken the shadows on those white flowers we need to go back to our transparent wash there and like I said in the beginning treat those flowers as one form if it's hard to tell where the petals are i think it's a good idea not to even worry about it and um, leave it kind of unsaid so to say leave some things to viewers imagination i think they look like white lilies there is enough information on paper without painting every single petal and every single stamen okay this layer is done i let everything dry all I have left to do is add darkest darks on the leaves and on the stems of the flowers and then balance all the details and paint the highlights. So let's work on the darks. I am using a small dagger brush. I have my sap green that I darkened even more by adding a little bit of crimson lake into it. Also neutralized it so nice very dark green kind of purplish color and I can vary the amount of green and purple and get a nice variation in the leaves and stems of the flowers squinting when looking at my reference photo to see all the darkest areas that I need to add some color to some pigment also using moon glow straight out of the pan and also using crimson lake so now I don't have to mix that much using very saturated pigment sometimes straight out of the pan sometimes a very thick saturated mixture on the palette adding all the details in between those white flowers all right another thing i need to do is balance all the details maybe add the smallest shadows on the jar just a few more details with the small brush shadows on the walls can be darkened I think the bottom edge of the table looks too light but I'll get to it in a second all right and 
here's my white gouache. It's artist gouache, so it has the same binder as watercolor. This is M. Graham's brand. I will be using it straight out of the tube in fresh, creamy consistency. And I'm just going to correct the edges of the flowers in just a few spots to give them a little more definition. Where the background ran over onto the flowers, I am going to restore whites with some opaque white with gouache. The wash on the wall behind the flowers was still streaky, so what I can do is apply a little more pigment there and also spritz it lightly from my spray bottle, being careful not to spray on the flowers, kind of spraying away from the flowers, and that allows the pigment to run and mix, and the wash looks a lot better. You will see it in the final photo of the painting that will appear in just a second on the screen. I think the table is can be a little darker as well. It's not very dark on the reference photo, but I think for my purposes, it needs to be darkened a little bit to make the flowers stand out even more. It's my artistic license to modify things as I see fit. All right, and here is the final result white lilies painted with limited palette with the help of some color pencils. I hope the techniques in this video will be useful in your art practice. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one here on Tamirab Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!